couple hundred dollars? Oh, about thirty-five hundred of them. Thirty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, that's what you're faced up against. What about parakeets? Well, that's a lot of different story, Fred. Those are uh, we raise all of our own parakeets. We have any color that you can possibly imagine under the rainbow, anywhere from pure white, which are albinos with pink eyes, all the way into blues and purples and yellows and greens. Do they make as good? Can they do the things that a parrot can do? With the same amount of training, I could, if I spent the same amount of time with a parakeet mm -hmm. that, that I've spent with this macaw, yes. Wouldn't you say, Glenn, that this is sort of the answer to people who want pets? Maybe I'd highly parakeet? recommend these birds if you're interested. One, not only for what Rich says, but two, these birds are adapted to captivity. And although you don't ever want to abuse or neglect a pet, these birds will tolerate a little bit of neglect, a little bit of abuse. And they, they adapt very well to ordinary methods. Uh, and as Rich says, he raises these, mm -hmm. whereas those macaws don't don't uh, breed in captivity, and their habitat in Brazil is being destroyed, and their status right now is questionable. Like Fred? Uh, whereas there's nothing like in question at all about these these small parakeets. Okay, well that's sort of the answer if somebody wants birds for pets. Go to a pet store, get a parakeet, okay. something like that. Don't take birds or a canary out of the wild. or a finch. There's a wide variety of choices. Big variety, Fred. Mm -hmm. How about for our anglers out there? Let's go to some fish. All of the fish I always see in pet stores are, are always, uh, I guess, what you call tame fish. How come we never see any game fish? Doesn't anybody want any? Well, they're tropical fish that you find in a pet store, Fred. Sure, you can have uh, Michigan game fish, but you do have to have special permits from the Department of Natural Resources. And uh, you have to go out and you have to collect your own species. And it's a, it's a lot more work, and, and quite frankly, you bring diseases in from the lakes, and it's not quite as conducive as just buying tropical fish where the water is sterile and you, you, you don't really have the problems that you have with bringing in your own fish. Uh, have you ever kept game fish? Yes, uh, there at the university we keep game fish on display and the students work with them and they have a great deal of trouble because of disease, just as Rich said, and also because these fish have a special diet. And it's very difficult to meet the dietary needs of, of these game fish in, in captivity. Oh yeah, feeding a pike, for example, daredevils really gets expensive. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but well, well, these, well, what is it cost to get a tank of just what you call the community fish and set it up? Well, community fish, Fred, like this one, um, you've got zebras and, and uh, swordfish, some mollies, uh, goldfish. You know, you've got a basic inexpensive setup. By the time you buy the tank, the gravel and the filter and that kind of stuff, usually under $25 if you don't go real extravagant. Well, that's a good alternative to a $3,500 parrot anyway. Let's go back and look at some of the, the mammals that you have. Well, I'm holding a guinea pig. You have a little hamster here, Rich. And uh, what do you have there, Glenn? That this a is a gerbil, and a it's gerbil? a black color phase of the gerbil. Well, aside from, from cats and dogs you can get at a pet store, it looks like everything else is rodents. It's in the mammal department. Well, you can get skunks and ferrets and that kind of stuff, but they just don't tame down to make the kind of quality pets uh, mm -hmm. that we'd like to offer. Well, in conclusion, Glenn, our tour of the pet store here, what do you recommend to people who would really like to have some Michigan wildlife for a pet? Well, these Michigan wildlife that are produced in pet stores, because they're docile, they're handleable, they don't have a lot of special requirements, they're easy to take care of. You know, for a child especially, they can tolerate a little bit of neglect without suffering too badly. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something a child can enjoy and learn what animals need to survive, food, cover, water, and for these things can take a little bit of affection. So. Okay, well that's great. For uh, people who enjoy wildlife, go to your pet store. Don't take animals out of the wild. It's illegal and just not advisable. But these do make pretty good Christmas gifts, eh? Oh, sure, sure. A little hamster can give it a lot of kids a lot of enjoyment at Christmas time. Especially keep an animal that you can keep and don't want to think